folks, Bob Collins for Diver Supply. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a little bit about valves, tank valves, and mostly about first stages. I want to thank Norm and uh, Russ for stopping in today, saying hello, spending some time with me talking about scuba. Enjoyed meeting you guys. So let's get on with the video. Now, when we look at today's tank valves, they've come a long way, just like uh, our first stages that you see around here. This particular valve on the majority of tanks that are being sold out there is called the Pro Valve. And it's a uh, convertible valve that is adaptable for both yoke in the past, believe it or not, yoke was called the international connection. Most people think, ah, the den was the international connection, but no, it's actually the A-clamp or the yoke style first stage was first called the international type connection for the first stage. But, so this one is adaptable for both yoke and den. Now, DIN is quite interesting. I'm going to show you one here in a second. And all you have to do is take this insert, I believe it's a 516 on most of these, and Allen, and take this insert out, and now you're ready for your DIN. Now, DINs are pretty interesting. The first um, units that came out, first stages that came out, were actually the yoke or also called a clamp. And then in um, late 58, 59, Poseidon came out with what's now known as the den. Now den's kind of interesting because it fully captures the O-ring. I think you guys can see that I'm gonna try to get some angles some different angles here. I think you can see the O-ring right there. It fully captures the O-ring when you screw the den into our convertible pro valve. And it gives it a nice compact uh, feel. And the tech guys really like it because then you don't have this yoke sticking out the back and it just gives you a little bit more clearance if you've got some kind of an overhead. The first of the first, uh, the beginning, let's call it the beginning of the first stages that came out were kind of like, and I'm going to put a connection, uh, a link to the, um, the video that I did on the uh, decor uh, called, I think it was called the D1, if I'm not mistaken. I'll put a link up here so you can look at it and you'll see how interesting that, that particular regulator was in the first stage. Now, this is uh, an older, much older TUSA, and this is a non-balanced first stage. And what I mean by that is we've got balanced first stage, which actually will sense the ambient water pressure around it, and it will adjust the IP, better known as intermediate pressure. Some of you out there may know that as low pressure, but it's adjustable. Now this particular is a, uh, first stage is a non-adjustable. And what I mean by that, if we take out this insert right here, is we're gonna see there's no spring in here. And so, in other words, this is to help service and take this first stage apart and exposes the balancing chamber and the high pressure chamber here. And this just goes back in. So this is called a non-balanced first stage. Now, how do we tell if something's balanced or non-balanced? Number one, ask the salespeople. Number two, you can look at something like this one. And this is a older Oceanic. And you can look at this one and what you'll see is the fact that when the insert is in here and what I've got in here is, and number one, let me say this, 
don't take your regulators apart to see what's in them unless you're certified to do that sort of work because it's not it's just not smart it's not safe so don't take your regulators apart but just kind of look at what I'm putting putting forward to you here. I'm going to put some links down below in the description if you want to read more about first stages and such. But what you're going to see here that I've taken out of this first stage, you're going to see that big hole right there. And what this does is this goes in and what we've got is this is our uh, retainer screw that you see here. And there's a thrush washer that goes on top of this right here. And then we've got our spring, and then we've got a washer that spreads the load here against the diaphragm that's in here. So what happens is this hole is what you're going to see on this first stage. And it lets water in and if you look closely, even take a flashlight and look down in some of these first stages, what you're going to see inside of there is you're going to see this spring. You'll be able to look in there and see this spring in there. Now, that spring, of course, as you adjust and use an Allen to adjust, it adjusts the IP when this unit is being set when there is just normal one atmosphere adjustment. So the IP is usually set about 130 or so, something like that. So that's what goes in here. And then the water goes in and the water pushes on the, on the spacer, the diaphragm spacer, and the spring continues to maintain the pressure on it and the ambient water pressure pushes on it, and because there's a spring there, it will adjust the IP up as the ambient pressure increases. Or in other words, as you tend to go deeper, it will increase. So it goes from 130 to 140 to 150, so that as you're breathing, the IP that's coming down the hose into your second stage which at the surface is 14.7 PSI. Then as you go to 33, let's just round it. It goes to 30 PSI. As you go on down, it goes to 40 PI, 45 PSI and 60 PSI. And this first stage, balance first stage, senses that ambient, raises that intermediate pressure coming down the hose. So you maintain, um, a kind of a constant percentage of pressure that is demanded through the second stage. Pretty simple and easy. Now, some of you have asked, what's the difference between a environmentally sealed first stage and a non-environmentally sealed? So again, you remember the hole that's in this one. If we look at this one, then there's actually a little diaphragm right here and this transfers and is watertight transfers that same ambient pressure in through here and down and the spring in here will adjust this if i take this off what we're going to see i'm going to now some of these between that that uh, seal the environmental seal between this seal and in here, there's on some of the units, like this one right here, there's a medium in there that's maybe an alcohol-based medium that's like a gel. And of course, you can't compress a liquid. But in this particular unit, there is a transfer piece that will transfer the water ambient pressure into here. This really is the difference between an environmentally sealed unit and a non-environmentally sealed unit. It's pretty much that easy, that simple in the way to accommodate it. Now, I just want to mention one thing about the den. If you've got a, 
a, a yoke and maybe you've bought a den type first stage, you can get the adapter to screw onto this so that you can mount this on a normal yoke. It kind of extends it a little bit, makes it bump in your head, maybe in the back of your head a little bit more, but it's actually many people all over the place tend to use these and it's very good. Now this particular, this is a beautiful piece of equipment here. This is the Mark 19 and it could be easily confused with the Scuba Pro Mark 25, but it's a beautiful piece of equipment. And this one, you can't actually see, and you might confuse this one because this has a, a protective cap on it, but there's spaces around the cap that allow the water in. And if I was to pop this cap off, we can actually see right in here, a very, very delicate seal for its environmental sealing system. And that's why it's got that, that protective cap on it to make sure it stays safe. So that's a little bit about first stages and about some adaptable tank valves. Appreciate you guys watching. I wanted to try to keep this nice and short. Again, Christmas is on the way. I hope everybody has a great holiday. And if I don't get another um, video up between now and the new year, I wish you all a happy new year and I'll see you in 22. Thanks again for watching. And like we always say, dive safe out there. Thanks a lot.